Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and look at a new section. We're going to look now at 1.3. And 1.3 is something brand new for a lot of you, and that's complex numbers. So first we're going to start with what a complex number is, and then we're going to look at the imaginary part. We're going to talk about what that is, and then we're going to classify the numbers. So a complex number has a real part and an imaginary part. So that's A plus BI. Now the A is going to be the real part, and the B is the imaginary part. Most of us have only worked with real numbers. And real numbers is everything from a fraction to pi to your integers like 3, 4, 0. Those are all real numbers. Complex numbers are a little bit different. We need to know what i is. And these are two very important definitions. Well, i is going to be found to be the square root of negative 1. So i is defined to be the square root of negative 1. In previous math courses, we couldn't take the square root of a negative number. We call that undefined. We didn't know how to work with it. Well, it turns out that we need to take that into consideration in some applications. So we determined that i was going to be the square root of negative 1. And also, when we square an imaginary number, we get negative 1. Okay, so i squared is negative 1. And we're going to use these definitions. in 1.3. So let's remember how to break up square roots first. And then we'll talk about what becomes an imaginary number. So just so we know, let's break up these roots. Let's start with one that we can break down pretty easily, just so we remember. The square root of 9. Well, the square root of 9 is simply what? 3, right? We know that. That's what we've done before. So that's nothing new. So the square root of 9 is 3. How would we break up something like the square root of 50? Well, if we use our calculator, the square root of 50 is not a whole number. We need to break it up into a real part out in front and what's left over underneath that root. So we take our 50 and we factor it down. Well, 50 is 2 and 25, right? And what do we know about 25? Well, 25 is a perfect square of what? 5 and 5. Now, when we take a square root, the pairs come out as 1, and then whatever's left over that doesn't have a pair is left underneath the root. So the square root of 50 would then be 5, square root of 2. Is everyone all right with that so far? What about the square root of, let's use a negative here. How about the square root of a negative 16? Now that negative is underneath that root, so it's going to be a little bit different. Well, we know that the square root of 16 is what? The square root of 16 is 4. Now that negative underneath the root, well, that's going to come out as an i. So the square root of a negative 16 comes out as 4i. Why does it have the i there? Because there's a negative underneath that root. Same thing with the square root of negative 49. Well, the square root of negative 49 is what? 7i. Why is it 7i? Because the square root of 49 is 7. 
the negative comes out as an op. Now let's do one that we have to break up into a, a part out in front and something left over underneath that root. So let's look now at um, how about the square root of negative 98. How would we break up 98? Well, now what we want is we want pairs. Now, 98 is an even number, so I'm going to try a 2. So 98 will break up into 2 and 49. And what do we know about 49? Well, 49 is a perfect square of what? 7 and 7. So we circle our pairs, so that 7 will come out as a 7. What's left over? Square root of 2. And what else do we have? We have an i. Why do we have an i? Because that 98 was negative. And we just put the i in front of the square root. So it's going to come out as 7i square root of 2. Let's try another one here. Let's try to find the square root of a negative 200. A little bit more complicated. We need to take that 200 and we need to break it down. Different ways of breaking it down to get the same result. How about we use 2 and 100? And what do we know about 100? Well, 100 is a perfect square of what? 10 and 10. So the tens will come out as 110. We have an i from the negative here, so that comes out. And what doesn't have anything attached with it to pair up? The 2. One more, just to make sure we know how to break these roots down. Let's use... Um, Let's say the square root of 147. And most of the time, these are going to be easy to break down. Now, what's our goal? Our goal is to get pairs. So we're going to take our 147, and we're going to break it down. Now, 147 is an odd number. So let's start with 3. If we have 147, and we divide that by 3, then what do we get? 49. So we've got 3, and then what? 49. We know that 49 will break up into then what? 49 will break up into 7 and 7. And then those 7s will come out. Do we have an imaginary part this time? No. Why not? Because it's positive. So that's 7 square root of 3. In some cases, it may not break down at all. For example, the square root of negative 6. Now, 6, what does 6 break down into? 2 and 3. Do we have any pairs with that? No. So the only thing that we could do is we know this is a negative here. So we'll put the i in front, and 6 doesn't break down, so that's i square root of 6. Is everyone okay with how we break these down? We're going to be breaking up a lot of roots. Most of the time, they'll break up very easily. Once in a while, you might have to work with it a bit to get your, your perfect square. But in the majority of the cases, it's going to be pretty easy. So that's how we break them down. Now let's talk about classifying them. Now when we classify numbers, in previous math courses, we talked about real numbers, okay? And I always like to use analogies, so let's think about a biology class. When we talk about real numbers, that's like saying all the animals in the animal kingdom. And we might break that down into, let's say, mammals and amphibians. Those are part of that, right? So, But everything that's an amphibian is also what? At the top, an animal. Same concept in numbers. 
we're going to have real numbers. And that includes your integers, your fractions, your decimals, everything that we work with so far is real. Now there is something on top of that, and that's going to be your complex numbers. In previous math courses, we didn't talk about complex numbers. The complex numbers, we can break that down. We can break that down into two separate parts. Real and non-real complex. And then we can break the non-real complex down into pure imaginary. So this is our tree, and this is going to help us figure out where numbers belong. So now let's talk about each type individually with some examples. When we talk about complex numbers, what are we talking about? When we talk about complex numbers, that is all numbers. So all numbers are complex. So everything is going to be complex. And again, that's like working in biology with all animals. Okay, all animals are animals, but there's mammals, amphibians below that. So we talk about complex numbers. All numbers are complex. So here's some examples. Zero. Zero is a complex number. Negative four. Complex number. One half. Complex number. Minus three-fifths. Complex number. Four minus seven i. That's a complex number as well. And also something like 9i. So every number that we use, no matter what, is complex. Just like all animals are animals, all numbers now are complex. In previous courses, you probably stopped at the reals. But we are adding a level on to that, and complex is at the top. So every number, no matter what, is complex. Now, numbers can be more than one type. So what are real numbers? Real numbers are what we're used to working with. So real numbers, we should know, but real numbers are things like 0, 1, negative 5, 3 fifths, um, 1 1.9, 3.7. So everything that doesn't have an I on it is going to be called real. So everything we've used in previous courses is real. So all numbers that don't have an I are real, so no I's. What about non-real? Well, non-real complex numbers have a real part and an imaginary part. So what would some examples of non-real complex numbers look like? 3 minus 2i, because it has an i on it. 9 plus 4i is non-real complex. And how about 7i? That's also a non-real complex number. And it will make more sense once we actually look at some examples of how to classify them. It's very simple, though. Something that's kind of new, but it's not difficult. Then we have the last part, which is pure imaginary. And what are pure imaginary numbers? Well, they only have an imaginary part. So these are only going to have an imaginary part. And what would some examples of those look like? 9i, 7i, 
3i minus 4i. Those are all what are called pure imaginary. So now we've looked at all the different types, and now we're going to classify the following numbers. I'm going to give you lots of numbers. We're going to classify them. Now when we classify them, they're going to be more than one type. So we're going to classify the following. Four. Okay, the whole number four. What is four? Well, four is a complex number. Because all numbers are what? Complex. So every number is complex. Now, what else is it? Is four a real number or a non-real number? Okay, 4 is a real number, so it's complex, and it's also real. We don't break real numbers down any further. In this course, we just say it's either real or non-real complex. What about the square root of minus 16? Well, we need to make sure we break it down. And what do we know about the square root of 16? The square root of 16 is 4. The negative underneath makes it 4 what? 4i. Okay, so how do we classify this? Well, first off, it's complex because all numbers are complex. Is it real or is it non-real? It has an imaginary component, an i, so this would also be non-real complex. And is it more than that? It is, because does it have a real part in front? Does it have addition or subtraction with it? No. So it's also pure imaginary. So it is complex, non-real complex, and also pure imaginary. What about 3 minus 7i? What would 3 minus 7i be? Well, 3 minus 7i, that's going to be complex because everything is complex. It's also non-real, complex. And is it pure imaginary? No. Why is it not pure imaginary? Because it has that real part of the 3 out in front. So this one's real with the 4. The 4i has nothing in front, so it's complex, non-real complex, and pure imaginary. When you have a real part and an imaginary part, it's complex, and it's also non-real complex. Let's do one more just to make sure we have it all figured out. About um, minus 3i. What would minus 3i be? Well, all numbers are complex, so it is complex again. It has an imaginary part. It's also non-real, complex. And then does it have a real part? No. So it would also be what? Pure imaginary. How about the square root of 5? Just one more to make sure we have these all down. So the square root of 5. We can't break down 5 at all, right? Does it have an imaginary part? Nope. It's just 5. Square root of 5. So that would be complex. And what else? Complex and also real. So is everyone comfortable now with how to break down and classify these numbers. The so square roots, we break them down if we can. When we classify numbers, what do we look at? We look at whether it has a real part or an imaginary part or both, and we classify it from there. Now we're going to look at how to combine these roots together. And we still need to use the fact that i squared is a negative 1. So we may need that fact in a moment. 
Well, let's talk about how to multiply these complex numbers together. So I want to go ahead and multiply the square root of minus 40 times the square root of 7, negative 7. So first thing we need to do, order of operations, before we multiply, is work with the roots. Remember, roots are above multiplication. So we're going to first work with that 40. And we're going to break down that 40. And there's different ways of breaking down that 40. So let's say we break that 40 down into 4 and 10. The 10 can go a little bit further into 2 and 5. And what about the 4? Well, the 4 is a perfect square of what? 2. Now, when we break it down, what are we looking for specifically? We want pairs. And everything that's not a pair is left underneath that root. So what do we have that's paired up here? Well, we have a pair of 2s. So that pair of 2's is going to come out as a 2. It's negative underneath here, so that comes out as a 2i. So that's gone. Now what's left over? Okay, What's left over is the square root of 10. Where did that 10 come from? That 10 came from 2 times 5, which is what? 10. And that came from here. So those 2 and 5 that are left over that don't have any pairs with them. They just get multiplied together, and that leaves you with that 10. Now, what about the square root of negative 7? Can we break down 7 at all? No. But what can come out here? An i. So what do we have left? We have i square root of what? 7. Is everyone okay with this so far? We broke it all down as far as we could. Now we need to go ahead and multiply. How we multiply is we take what's out in front and they go together. So what do we have? We have a 2. And think of the i's as like an x. x times x is x what? Squared, right? What do we have? i times i, so that is i squared. And we'll deal with that in a moment. What's left over underneath the root now? Well, underneath this root, we have 10 times 7, and that is a what? 10 times 7, well, that is a 70. Now, we need one more fact. We need to remember i squared is a negative 1. So that's going to come into play here. So that i squared is a negative 1. So we can rewrite that as 2 times a negative 1 times the square root of 70. And what's 2 times a negative 1? 2 times a negative 1 is a negative 2. So what is my final finished answer? My final answer here would be negative 2 square root of 70. Because i squared is what? Negative 1. So anytime we see an i squared, what can we replace that i squared with? Negative 1. So that's one of the facts that we need to remember. i squared is a negative 1. Let's try another one of these. So we're going to try to multiply again. About the square root of a minus 125 times the square root of a minus 50. So order of operations, before we multiply, we need to break these down. So let's go ahead and break each one of these down. 125. Well, that's 5 and 25. 25 is a perfect square of 
5 and 5. Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for pairs. The pairs come out as 1. So we have a pair of 5s. So that pair of 5s will come out. We have a negative here. So that also comes out as an I. What's left over that doesn't have a pair with it? 5. So the square root of a negative 125 breaks down into 5 i square root of 5. What about 50? How does 50 break down? Let's try to break up 50. 50 is 2 and 25. And then 25 breaks down into what? 5 and 5. So again, that 5 comes out. We have an i with it because it's negative. And what doesn't have a pair? 2. So that's left underneath the root there. Now we go ahead and multiply. Numbers out in front multiply together. So 5 times 5 is 25. i times i is i squared. And 5 times 2 is 10. We know that i squared is a negative 1. So we'll replace that i squared with a negative 1. And then what do we know about 25 times a negative 1? Well, that's a minus 25. And then the square root of 10 just comes along with it. Is everyone okay with that so far? You see how we're breaking them up. So we break them up, multiply everything out in front, multiply what's underneath the root. Anytime you have an i squared, what do we replace it with? Negative 1. How do we divide? Well, we want to divide now, let's say, the square root of... negative 27 over the square root of negative 9. Well, we need to break everything down first to see what we have and what we're working with. So 27, and again I'm making these pretty simple, just like your homework, break up nicely. 27 is 3 and 9. 9 is 3 and 3. So the pair of 3's comes out, negative, so we have an i left over, and what doesn't have anything with it? The 3, so it's 3, i squared of 3. Now what about the square root of a negative 9 down below? That's easy enough, because the square root of 9 is what? 3, and it comes out as an i. Is everyone okay with how I did that? Now, what can we do? Well, when we divide, we can cancel. So the threes can cancel, the i's can cancel, and then what is left over? Only part that's left over is the square root of what? Square root of three. That's it. Because everything else canceled out. Let's combine everything together. So this one's going to be multiply and divide. Let's look for something kind of similar to what you'll see in your homework here. How about the square root of... Let's say, um, how about the square root of minus 25 times the square root of minus 4 over the square root of 9. Okay, these are all going to come out to be whole numbers, so I made this one a little bit easier. Just to make sure we're, we're not confused with some of the details here, so this is going to be a little bit easier one. Then we'll try a little bit more complicated 
Could you denominate it just a nine? Yep, it's just nine. Okay, it's a positive nine. So what do we need to do first? Well, first we break up all these roots. So what's the square root of 25? Five, so that's going to be a five i because it's negative. What's the square root of four? Two, it's negative, so we have a two i. And what about the square root of nine? Three. Do we have an i down below? No, why not? Because it doesn't have a negative with it, does it? So that, that nine just comes out as a three. Now we'll go ahead and multiply. Five times two is a ten. I times I is an I squared. And that's still over 3. And what do we know about I squared again? What is I squared? By definition, I squared is a negative 1. So it's 10 times a negative 1 over 3. And that then gives you, for your final answer, a negative 10 over 3. We'll do one more of these, and then we'll talk about standard form of complex numbers. So one more of these. Again, then we're going to multiply and divide. And let's use um, about the square root of a negative 75. times the square root of negative 3 over square root of negative 5. So this is like what you'll see in one of your homework problems. It's very similar to question 7 in your homework. So first things first, we divide out all these roots, split them up as much as we can. So 75, well, how can we break up 75? Different ways of doing it. Now, we do want perfect squares. So how about we use a 3 and a 25? You could have also used 5 and 15. Right? You end up with the same result. But what, when you break these up, what you want is, is perfect squares if possible. It makes it easier. 5 and 15 would have an extra step. But 25 is a perfect square of what? So that's why I chose it. So we'll break these down. So we have a 5. We have an I that comes out. What's left over? What's left over is the square root of what? 3. So there's that first piece. What about the square root of 3? Can I break that down at all on the second part? Nope, but it's negative. So what comes out? I. So that would be I squared of 3 there. Is everyone okay with that so far? What about down below? Okay, down below, let's, let's make this a little bit different. Sorry about that. Let's make this a negative 3 down below. That way it cancels out nicely. So make that a square root of negative 3. Here. Sorry about that. Let's make sure that's a square root of negative 3. Well, what do we know about square root of negative 3? Can't break down, so that's going to be i square root of what? 3. Let's just make sure that 5 is a 3. We can just make it work out a lot nicer. There. We can now break it up a bit and combine things together. So we can cancel out terms like we would with regular algebra. So what we can do is we can take i squared of 3 and an i squared of 3. See, these can what? One's on the top, one's on the bottom. So those can directly cancel, can't they? Because right? they're the same. So those are gone. And what is now left over? So those canceled out. So now we're left with 5i square root of what? 3. And that's going to be our final answer.
Was everyone kind of okay with how we do this? We break them up first, and we see how we can cancel. If we have an i squared, what does i squared become? i squared becomes a negative 1. For the last part of this section, we're going to talk about complex numbers in standard form. And this is standard form for a complex number. Standard form of a complex number is a plus bi. So that's going to be standard form. And we use this a lot in the next section when we talk about factoring and using the quadratic formula. So we're going to be using standard form quite a bit in one form. So we now want to write these in standard form. Let's write this in standard form. Let's say we have 10 minus the square root of, let's say, a negative 90 over 2. Now I want to write this in standard form. And this is something that you would get out of the quadratic formula, which we'll learn about in 1 4. I picked this one on purpose because students might make this mistake. Can I cancel out the double negatives here? No. The reason why we cannot do that is when we cancel, that is multiplication. Now, before we multiply, we have to work with the roots. So the roots come first. Break up your roots first before you do anything else. So 90. 90 breaks up into 9 and 10. And 9 is a perfect square of 3 and 3. And that's a negative there. So that's going to break down into 10 minus 3. So we've got a pair here. i, because it's negative, square root of 10 over 2. Now, how do we write this in standard form? Well, to write it in standard form, we have to split it up into a real part and an imaginary part. So we can split this up into two separate fractions. So we've got 10 over 2, that's the real part, minus 3i square root of 10 over 2. We need to break this down if we can. What about the first part, the real part? 10 over 2. Don't try to make this more complicated than what it needs to be. 10 over 2 is what? 5. So that's 5 there. And then 3 and 2 will not break down. I cannot break down the 10 and the 2 here because that 10 is underneath your radical, underneath your root. So we're going to write this now as a minus 3 square root of 10 over 2, and when we write these in standard form, we'll put the i at the end. So we'll rewrite it in standard form, just like that. So that is in standard form. We separate out the real part from the imaginary part. One more, and then we'll take a short break. We're going to write this in standard form again. So how about minus 4 plus the square root of minus 30 over 2. So this is what we have, and we want to write this in standard form. So first thing we do is we break down that 30, if possible. So 30 is going to break down to 3 and 1. 10 and 2 
and 5. Now I pick 30 because 30 isn't going to break down at all. Do we have any pairs to work with? No, so it's going to stay the same. So rewriting, this would then be minus 4 plus i, be sure and bring that out, square root of 30 over what? 2. Now, how do we now finish it and write it in standard form? We split it up and get the real part and the imaginary part, and then break it down if possible. And what about minus 4 over 2? So minus 4 over 2, that breaks down into a minus 2. Can I reduce this 30 and this 2 down? Does that break down to 15? No, why not? Because that 30 is underneath the root, the 2 is not. So what do we write that as then? Square root of 30 over 2, because you cannot break that down. And where do we put the i? We write them in standard form. We normally put the i at the end. Just so you know, when we break up this minus 30, we put the i in front of the root. Now, why don't we put it at the end? Well, when we rewrite these, we just want to make sure that we do not, at any step of the problem, think the i is underneath that root. So if it's not in a fraction, put the i in front. If it's a fraction at the very, very end, you put the i at the end. It's just kind of the, the grammar of mathematics. So if there's a fraction, put it at the end. If there's not, we put it in front of the root. So that takes care then of 1.3. We'll take another short break. And we'll meet back here at, uh, let's say, 8.40. So we'll meet back here about 8.40. And we'll look at 1.4.